Do 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 do. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. It's time for Bible study. I can't see nothing with these foggy glasses. Hang in there with me. We're going to Revelation chapter five. Revelation chapter five. As they come on in, they're coming in. They're coming in. All right. Get your Bibles out and see if we can figure this out here. Revelation chapter 5, 6th verse, if we can. Okay. Thank you, sir. It was kind of loud. Revelation 6. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Whatever it is. Revelation 5, sorry. Okay. Up with the mic. Everybody, the Sir Walter, the Sir Walter Jones Show. I'm he. It is Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> yeah. I can't keep up with my days. We didn't air yesterday. So today is Wednesday in my mind, but it's Thursday on the books. It is Theology Thursday, Theology Thursday. Uh, we talk about the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, man. That is the book for me. I'm just so excited and elated to be here. Another day, another day that the Lord has made. Man, I want to rejoice, and I want to be glad in it. We got another good topic here today out of this beautiful Sunday School book called Power for Living. International Sunday School lesson, All Creatures Worship the Lamb. It is out of Revelation chapter 5, 6 through 14. Grab your Bibles and see if you can go with me. The Bible truth is Revelation speaks of joyful praise and eternal worship of God. Eternal. Word pops out in your face there. Uh, let's see, uh, lesson aim, by the end of the lesson, we will analyze the symbols of the heavenly worship of the Lamb. Reflect on the significance of the whole world worshiping the Lamb who was slain and celebrate with joy the faithfulness of God who promised that the whole world until uh, uh, the whole world will unite in worship of Christ. Got some background scriptures here, five, uh, uh, as I said, uh, um, six verse through the 14. And it says here, read and incorporate the insights that you gain from reading the background scriptures into your study uh, of the lesson. So uh, we've got to kind of recap from last week to bring you into what's going on this week. Last week was called Heavenly Worship out of Revelation chapter 4. It was the first through the 11th verse. So it pretty much was the whole kick, kittle and shaboom. How y'all say that? Kittle and, kick, kittle and shaboom. I don't know. I'll say it when I figure it out. Okay. But notice last week what I did though. I walked you through the story of the eschatology of the lesson. Those of you who know anything about eschatology, uh, it is the study of end time. I talked about chapter one and how um, the, Rev the revelator took us through an order. The book of Revelation is not really in uh, uh, an order of occurrences. It's, it, it, it kind of misses its order after a while. But the first, second, third, and fourth, and maybe fifth chapters uh, and so on, I believe, stay kind of chronological. And the first verse talks to give us an introductory of introduction of who Jesus Christ is, and uh, it portrays what he what he looks like by using symbolisms. Uh, and we talked about how then the churches, uh, the seven churches, pop up, and these churches pop up in different eras. It this this wasn't a one moment occurrence. These are different eras of the seven churches. All right, <coughs> and um, <coughs> chapter two kicks us off at the uh, uh, the church of Ephesus, and then Smyrna, and then Pergamos, and then uh, uh, Thyatira, uh, and then it goes into Sardis and Philadelphia, and then after the Philadelphia church, uh, the revelator talks about how God is going to uh, protect the, the people, uh, keep them from the hour of temptation, uh, the Greek word meaning ek, which is out of, and not dia, meaning preserved through. And this is for those of you who are studiers or believers of uh, pre-tribulation. Those of you who are mid-trib people, then you believe that it is a preservation, that God's going to preserve you through the tribulation, and you're going to go through some stuff. And some of you believe that you will be beheaded. I'm not sure who believes that, but then the, then the church of uh, Laodicea, 
And then we went to chapter 4, the, the 24 elders pops up here. The throne of God comes up here and it talks about the seven spirits of God. And Elder Jones explained it last week what the seven spirits were. And he referred to it being the Holy Spirit pretty much. And But we also went to Isaiah uh, chapter, was that 7 or something like that? 11 and 2. 11. Isaiah 11 gives you a list of the seven spirits and you have to put them all together. It still means it's the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, then we finish chapter four. Chapter five, the lesson, although it starts in verse six, we would like to at least read the first five verses to kind of give you a, a kickoff. This is the seal. These are the seals that you'll start seeing uh, being popped, okay? Because the first seal, um, the, the chapter five talks about the sealed book, but then chapter six talk about uh, uh, how the seals were opened and then what happens with these seals when they're loosened. Okay, uh, I wish I wish that the um, that the Sunday school uh, lesson would go further into Revelation, but I guess they're trying to make a point here. All right, because they kind of stopped. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, no man on earth, and neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open or to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Stop crying, boy. Behold, the lion of the, of the tribe of Judah. That could be only one, one person that I can think of. All right. The root of David. That can only, anyway, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So there should be no question on who this is opening the seals. And then in comes the lesson in verse 6. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts. We talk about the four beasts. One uh, looks like a man. The other one looks like, uh, what was it, a lion? lion. And one looks like an eagle. A flying eagle. A flying eagle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, there's another one. Ox. An ox. All right. These And these four beasts have a service, have a job to do. And their job will pop up here and in the next chapter. Mm -hmm. All right. The four beasts. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb and it had been slain as it had been slain, having seven horns. See that seven keeps popping up. Yep. God's perfect, brilliant number. Having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. You see the description of the seven spirits again? Mm -hmm. It keeps, it, it seemed like he, he just continued to help y'all see who these seven spirits are and what it is. And he came and took the book. Mm-hmm. He came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Okay. These are bowls, these vials, okay? Mm -hmm. And the and these are and and incense. So that's the King James says odors. So these are mm -hmm. bowls of of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. There's a there is a um, psalm I believe alludes to how um, God takes your tears mm -hmm. and puts it in a bottle. A bottle, okay? Mm -hmm. So every tear that you cried. Until the Lord is not wasted, Elder Joe. So why do you cry your last tear yesterday? Yeah, yeah you, you marry, marry people. Y'all cried your last tear. Yeah, yesterday. 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 So, yesterday. so what, what happened to you? The, the tear jars. <laughs> becomes... That means you're not making a deposit if you cried your last tear. No. So then he ain't got nothing to wipe. He ain't got nothing. He got, well, verse 8, he, he, then ain't, it, yours ain't going to be in here. Uh, mm -mm. In, at, at least... And that's going to be much. <laughs> okay. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain. 
Mm-hmm. And has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So you mean tell me that heaven only belongs to the Jew? Nope, everybody. Everybody. So when I get to heaven, it's just going to be Church of God and Christ. That's it. And nobody else going up to heaven. It's just all bishops and superintendents. No, just and pastors the saints. and missionaries and just nope, just the same. Just the same. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah, lay people. Everybody else will get lay. their reward right here on the right earth. Right here on earth. They're getting it right now. <laughs> but that goes against the uh, uh, the Jehovah's Witness, oh, L. Jones. Oh, I go against them. You go against them. <laughs> <laughs> and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Oh, mm-hmm. made us kings and priests. Kings and priests. Man, that's uh, that's. We some potent takes. That's right now. And I behold and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. See, <laughs> he didn't know how to say millions. No. Okay. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb slain. That's a Marvin, uh, Marvin Wine's tune, by the way. Mm. Uh, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. Riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. That's a whole lot of them, y'all. That's seven. And that's seven to get. There it is again. You can't escape the seven. That's seven. I got seven people right here watching. They bought the seven <laughs> everywhere. Uh, and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all, and all that are uh, in them heard I saying, they heard it. Mm-hmm. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Last one. And the four <laughs> beasts said, Amand. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. They always fall. They always falling down. It is one unified force here, Elder Jones. Yeah, yeah, when somebody yeah. said that the kingdom of God seems to be divided, it seemed to be divided. Yeah. Beelzebub don't cast out Beelzebub. He don't cast out. His, his kingdom his is kingdom never divided. It's not divided whatsoever. So we see an undivided kingdom right here. I, and actually, I believe that the kingdom of God is not divided. It's just that the people are. Ah. Yeah. People right. are. And some of them may not even be in the kingdom and have no clue. That's my point, L. Jones. Yeah. Many of them are not even believers. I believe there are people who say they're Christian, but they're anti-Christ. They're anti-Christ. Their life, they, the Bible talk about their, their heart. Is far from it. Far from it. They speak, you know, with their lips, but their heart is far from it. And I'm finding that I know we, we speak against the, the church a, a whole lot, but I'm really finding out that some of the people that we call church ain't church either. That's true. Because if you are church, you you I, I I spoke at Pastor Marsoff's church, and the Lord gave me something about two words: uh, meekness and gentleness. Mm-hmm. One is an inward effect, and the other one is an outward effect. Hmm. Meekness is your attitude toward your enemies. Mm-hmm. That's 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 the ability to be able to hold your peace and don't say nothing, right. knowing that that individual is lying against you. But gentleness is your approach. You approach them in a soft manner. That's good. Both of those really come from an individual being saved, mm-hmm. and I believe one of them is the fruit of the spirit, if not both of them. Mm-hmm. Which means, based on our attitudes and how we handle things in life, apparently we can't. Have the spirit of God within us. Ooh. So maybe it may not be the church people that's doing all. I mean, the the building church people, yes, but the body of Christ possibly not so. The body of Christ possibly not so. Yeah. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, suff- uh, long suffering, gentleness. Just gentleness. Goodness, mm-hmm. faith, meekness. They both are in there. Yeah, temperance against yeah. such as no and that's And that's the ability to be able to know you have a right to choose somebody out, but choose not to. Mm-hmm. Because the Bible says that when the accusers accused Jesus falsely before uh, Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, hey, ain't you going to defend yourself? The Bible says he said, he said nothing. True. That's meekness. The world calls it weakness, but God calls it meekness. That's true. And I would rather live the world's, not live the world's opinion, but I would rather live God's dominion rather than the world's opinion on how I should handle the matter. And Jones, mm-hmm. I'm going to press you on this.
Okay. Uh, I I have discovered that there have been. I think the Bible says actually those are the ones going to inherit the earth. The meek. The meek. That's right. They're the last ones standing. It seems like. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say that is because it is those who are meek that seem to be weak, and everybody all wild and bolsters and do their thing. But once they get in trouble, they guess who they call? The, they call the weak. The meek. They go back to running to the meek. Yeah. Help me out. The guy mm -hmm. who wasn't saying much. Right. He was the one that's always fasting and interceding and praying mm -hmm. and things for that. And he'll, he'll do a little word here for you and then, and then move on. Mm -hmm. Nothing excites him. Mm -hmm. Nothing excites that person. Uh, and then, but that's the very person. That's the one. You know, and, and people laugh at, sometimes people laugh at the meek. Yes. Um, they, and they look at, I look at you actually. Um, here you are preaching for men of God, pastors, mm -hmm. superintendents and bishops right now who looked at you. Probably as that's that's little Rodney. Yeah, little, that's yeah. that's little jo, Lawrence Jones boy. <laughs> yeah, right. Now they're calling you exactly to come yeah. speak for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why you think that's happening, and what is it that was there something that was there a point that you had to prove? Mm -hmm. Was there some boisterous thing that you did? Did you pay a fee? No. I mean, how, how are these people now all of a sudden calling you? These are men who've been in ministry a long time. Way before me. I mean, look at you. You Look at Sunday. It was a Sunday where you were at Pastor Marsal's church. Mm -hmm. We were introduced to him in 1980, maybe. Yeah, 78. 79, 80, something like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Exactly. He was preaching then. He was preaching then. Okay. <laughs> About the three Hebrew boys. Yes, right, but, <laughs> but he was preaching then. And we were just... Little boys playing little boys our instruments. On our little harps. You see what I'm saying? On and now vials. all these same men are calling us to minister to them. Yeah. So what is that? Uh, it has something to do with the spirit of meekness. Yeah. Uh, because meekness, when when an individual now, Pastor Marshall is a good young man. I really enjoyed. We had an awesome service. We got a soul Sunday, and I praise yeah. God for the soul. Um, it's something about what what you are. People are attracted to you, but. Really, they don't know, but they are attracted to the God that's in you. There is. When they see the God that's in you, the Bible talks about wherever Christ went, there were crowds. Yes. They were more or less attracted to more than just possibly his looks or whatever, and even possibly for more than what he could do for them. Yeah. But it's something about an attraction. When you have the fruit of the Spirit within you, it produces something, and your, you become, your, your nature become the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. And all we have to do is allow it to be produced because the Holy Spirit puts the seed within us. And then it's the Holy Spirit that produces the meekness and, and the kindness or whatever in us. Mm -hmm. And I think what people are seeing now is a lot of stuff is just fluff. True. It's fluff. You never have to fight to be what you want to be. All you have to do is be what God called you to be. Oh, you do. And then people will come to you because God knows how to draw them. He wants to draw them to somebody who bears his image, who bears his character, mm -hmm. who bears his anointing. And that's what he wants to do. In this day and time, we need to be meek, mm -hmm. not weak, but meek. But the world will think you're weak. But when they get in trouble, like you said, they're going to call you because they know that you exemplify the fruit of the Spirit. They exemplify the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And to this lesson here... The effects of the four, the beast, mm -hmm. and the 24 elders. 24 elders. They are on one accord yes. in worship. In worship. And John had the ability to be able to see this and write and tell us about it. But John himself was a meek and humble man. Yeah. Because he was called the disciple that Jesus loved. Hmm. Notice none of the other disciples was really called that. Right. But this man was, I don't know what it was about him. I don't know if maybe Jesus saw something, but I believe that this was the same one who Jesus entrusted his own mom to yes. when he was on the cross. Son, behold thy mother. Yes. You know. So what's it to you if I tell him to stay here until I come back? Right. And he was the last one. So I believe that the Lord rewarded him for his honor that he had toward Christ. Yeah. And I believe that that still exists. The Lord will reward us in his own way, in his own time. All he wants us to do is be like him. And 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 uh, what we call in the YPWW, let my life reflect the image of Christ or mirrors of the image of Christ or something like that. So John, in this particular lesson, John sees this, this vision and he sees worship in its pureness, mm -hmm. in its cleanness. 
He sees worship at his best. You can't get no greater than what he sees here. And I know that there are times when we can do that type of imagery on earth. We can. Yes. All we have to do is, is want it done. <laughs> want it done and want it to be done and do whatever it takes for this particular worship to be done. And we can come out of the presence of God and everybody could be healed. So set us up here. Mm -hmm. Last week, who was sitting on the throne? Last week, God was sitting on the throne. The Bible says that he who sat on the throne, uh, nowhere here in today's lesson or last week's lesson, did John reference that it was God. Right. But we know that it was him because it says that he who liveth forever and forever. Yeah. He talked about the thundering and the lightnings and the sounds of the trumpet coming from this particular seat. He talked about the colors the emerald and the, the jasper and, and the, the rainbow that was surrounding him. The Sardis. The Sardis. And, and, and then he talked about in his hand. In his hand, he had a book or he had a seal. I mean, uh, 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 we call it a book, but it's actually a scroll. Mm -hmm. It was rolled up. Mm -hmm. And this one was so important that it had writing on the inside and on the outside. Yeah. Usually, usually a scroll has writing on the inside and you roll it up mm -hmm. so that the contents is on the inside. And you put a seal on it for only the one who's authorized to loose the seal to read it. This book or roll was so important that it had writing on the inside and on the outside. And it was in the hand of him who sat on the throne. It was in his right hand, which is the hand of authority, the hand of power. The problem was it was in his hand to be received by someone else. Ah, okay. Okay. It was in his hand. Yeah. It's in his hand like here, take this position. But the cry went forth, a proclamation went forth. Who is worthy to take it? Who's okay. worthy to loose the seal? Who's worthy to even look? So they're looking for somebody who can not only grab it, ah. but who can open it, all of the seals, yes. and then who can read it. Right. So whoever it was, and it couldn't be one person each point, somebody had to be worthy to do everything. And it seems like it's, it says something about who who was able to open the book, mm -hmm. even to look thereon. To, yeah, to look on. So, and, uh, because, remember, and it's not in our lesson, so I won't deal with it. Each one of those seals represents something. And it had to be somebody who was authorized to open up and see the contents of each one of those seals. And the problem was, apparently there was a search. And this is what got me. They searched all over. You see where it says there was nobody in heaven, there was nobody on earth, and there was nobody below the earth. Yep. For yeah. some reason, he didn't want to say hell. <laughs> but this got me. You mean the friend of God, which is Abraham, was not worthy to do it. Mm -hmm. You mean the man who was after the heart of God, which is David, he was not worthy to do it. You mean the man who was obedient in all of his house, which was Moses, he himself was not worthy to do any of these not things. I didn't even know who, who that uh, shoot evil. That, that, that was Job. Job is shoot evil. Job, yeah. But he had that crazy wife. Yeah. So I can understand that. <laughs> so, but th there's nobody. And that lets us know, Walter, we, we want to be worthy, but we really ain't worthy. We really ain't worthy. We ain't worthy of nothing. We're dumb. Yeah, it, you, you see what I'm saying? So, but what got me was... John said he wept. He began to cry because nobody. See, he got this vision. He needed to know what was the contents of this scroll. Mm. But if there was nobody found worthy, then he don't know what the scroll, what's going to take place. Because he's writing so that we can understand the, the eschatology and, and all that kind of stuff. But then he hears one of them elders cry unto him. He says, weep not. And then he says to John, uh, to John to look. He says, behold. That's why John says, and I beheld. Mm -hmm. So he says to John, look. But now look at how the two of them describe what they saw. The elder described the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. When John looks to see, he doesn't see the lion of the tribe of Judah. He sees a lamb. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference between the two. Mm -hmm. One is the king of his castle. One is the domain. One is the head of the monarch. One is the one of authority and of power and might and strength. He's a conqueror. He's a warrior and all that. But that's what the, the, the elders saw. But John saw somebody who was meek, who was humble, who was lowly. He saw a lamb. And we know that a lamb uh, all throughout the Old Testament was the sacrifice of God. 
for the sins of man. But Jesus, as we know, is the ultimate sacrifice, which I don't know why we're still trying to sacrifice. There is no more sacrifice. Mm. That's it. He, he's the one. So John turns and he sees the lamb. First thing he notices about this lamb is this lamb is standing. Mm. This lamb is not in slain position. Mm -hmm. That means this lamb rolls mm -hmm. from the dead. Mm. But he still bears the marks of one that had been slain. Mm. So without a shadow of a doubt, we know one thing, that this lamb was Jesus. Because I think it was John the Baptist says, behold the lamb. Yes, see, there it is. John said, now behold the lamb which taketh away, taketh away the, sin. the sins of the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, because prior to that, a, the, their sins had to be covered through a blood sacrifice right. by an animal. That's right. And what they, if they sinned again, they had to do that thing all over again. Every week, every month, if, every Yes, exactly. and, and, and all once a year for the priest. For the priest. Okay. For the atonement. For the atonement of himself and everybody else. Right. All right. So now this this person's coming down the street and John sees him from afar mm -hmm. and says, okay, this is it right here. This is the one. Nothing else comes after, after right. this. So this vision that I see of of this mortal person by the name of John mm -hmm. who sees Christ as a lamb. Mm -hmm. So John has not done the complete work yet. He's still, he's still, he may be in a vision, but he still hasn't right. been, uh, uh, he he's hasn't, still unfolding. Yes, he's he unfolding. Says. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he sees, and this is a message, it's a wonderful message that he sees Christ one way, mm -hmm. but those in, in the kingdom who have who who's now in the kingdom? They see him as this 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 a uh, kingdom person mm -hmm. because to call someone lamb is not it's not kingdom. It's right. It's more of a humble and it's uh, more of a humble type of thing. Slaughter. Right. So it's not a reigning thing. Right. It's not that's it's uh, but to to now these people in heaven they can only see Christ mm -hmm. as this conquering king. king. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, uh, who is who is uh, well, everything they described him to be? Mm -hmm. So, is it is there a way? I wonder for us to look at this as how we individuals see God. It seems like the the world sees Christ one way; mm -hmm. we see Christ another way. Right. I think that's why we've seen a lot of the inclusion popping up mm -hmm. on on the earth mm -hmm. and we see this universalism unitarianism and all these that we they see christ as one that, way one way mm -hmm. and we see him we as something a else twofold way that we see him we see yeah. him as the son of man mm -hmm. but we also see him as the king of kings as and the king. lord of lords yes we we have to see him in both because we understand that the same one who was the sacrificial the sacrificial lamb is the same one that got up with all power in his hand, mm -hmm. and he will reign as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Yes. So we have to see him that way, and then we preachers have to preach him that way. Mm -hmm. Paul says we preach Christ crucified. Mm -hmm. So we have to, in our doctrine and in our gospel message, Christ has to be presented as the ultimate sacrifice of God, but then he has to be presented as the one who got up with all power in his hand and who has ascended and who's uh, making intercessions for us. And then he's the same one who gave us his spirit to empower us to be like he is and like he was, yeah. which includes the spirit of meekness. Which includes that. Yeah, because we got to know when to fight and when not to fight. Mm -hmm. Because if we do all the fighting, then there is no place for vengeance of God. True. He says vengeance is his. He will repay. If we hold our peace and let the spirit of meekness operate in us and then handle things right by the spirit of gentleness, then God will fight the battle. Okay, I'm pressing you again, as I always have to. Let's talk about that uh, because the saints seem to be very angry. Yes, yes. The saints are extremely angry and there's something going on and, I, and I, there's a spirit on this earth that, that seems, I don't know if it's been here for a while or it just seems to rear its evil head as, as if we, like we see racism. Mm -hmm. It's always been here. It's always been there. But depending on who's the president, right. you, you it, it wakes itself up True. more so. Um, we, saw it with Don, we saw it with Barack Obama, mm -hmm. especially during his election, we, we, his first election, we saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, them, them, 
with signs of Hitler and mm-hmm. monkeys and stuff like that. We mm-hmm. saw it. Then he became president. Then we didn't see as much. Mm-hmm. There was racism in Congress because they really was trying to stop him from doing this stuff. So we did see some of it. Right. But when Trump started running, mm-hmm. we saw it so heavy, so hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, Bronis says the elders saw what Jacob prophesied to his son Judah. Yeah. Yeah. The lion of the lion. They were gonna, he was gonna, he was like a crouch. Mm-hmm. He was like a lion crouch. Crouching. Absolutely. Uh, Joe Hill says John simply saw the, the same Jesus he saw on the earth. Mm-hmm. That's what John, Joe Hill's saying. Uh, Mark Terry says, could it be that John only knew Christ as the lamb? Oh, he says, and you're saying it now. So he was typing while I was saying it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Christ is the soon reigning lion of Judah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but the saints are angry. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a whole lot of us that are angry. Mm-hmm. So it seems like the, the fruit of the Spirit can't be recognized right. amongst the ecclesia of the church. Because everybody's angry and upset. Help us out. What, 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 what does come from? I, I think because our message has changed. Who The message? Who's the message? The message that the ministers are giving. Ah, oh, okay. Uh-huh, concerning Christ. Uh, when you look at something, there is a... a, a a money demon that's reigning on this earth and hoovering over our church. Mm-hmm. Look at all your commercials. It's about money now. Mm-hmm. Everything is about suing now. Yeah. Okay? Um, all that kind of stuff. You go to church, it's about sowing seed. So that's all about money. Uh, the gospel of prosperity, it's all about money. And what happens is because we're trying to get to a, a place in life not understanding that the only way for you to reach there is through the blood of Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Mm-hmm. But we want to reach it on a fleshly order. And when we don't reach it, we get angry, we get upset, and then we got bills, and we got this, and we got we come up against so much, and we forget the scripture that says uh, about, um, uh, um, I think it's Philippians 4 and 6, be careful for nothing, by, by everything, in everything, by prayer, and, and you know what I'm saying, supplication, supplication let your requests be, be made known unto, the Lord, unto God. Yeah. The problem is, I think we have kind of shifted the Bible message, and so we don't do a lot of biblical teachings. True. When you don't do biblical teachings, the, the membership or the laity cannot do biblical principles to receive biblical answers. True. So now everything is about, I read about Asa, and I, I spoke on this a while back. Asa the king, God got upset with Asa because this kingdom rose up against Asa. Asa wrote to Ben-Hadad and told him, let's make an alliance between the two of us. Come join with me and we can defeat this other guy. It did. But then the priest, uh, the, the prophet came to Asa and said, the Lord said, because you relied on man and not him, you got to rely on man the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. And then when he got sick, in his leg, the Bible said he consorted with the physicians and not with God, so he died with that illness. Mm-hmm. And what happens is in this day and time, we consult with the flesh and not with God. And so rather than us being meek and humble and gentle and allowing the fruit of the Spirit to take place, then we mess up because our flesh rises up, and then the flesh always put the Spirit to sleep. It's 3 a.m., mm-hmm. okay? Sounds like a like a political commercial. Uh, it's three a.m. Okay, we're sick. Mm-hmm. We pick up the phone. Guess what we call it? We call Walgreens. Well, <laughs> it, okay, we call it Walgreens. That's if our prescription has already been written. No, out. we call them the pharmacist. We want to know what to take for. Sure. Them, All right, that's good. Yeah. Now, but that would be that would be a sensible thing to do if you need to mm-hmm. but many people who who are part of a church they're going to call the pastor they're going to call the pastor at 3 o'clock in the morning 3 in the morning is because they feel that they have no power and no connection and no connection to mm-hmm. god so what we have done was we put the veil back up and put the pastor on the other, on the other side. side he's the high priest he's the high priest right so we've turned over, turned over to the in the Catholic Church in a sense because they yes. still do that. Because right. when they sin, they they have to go to this man mm-hmm. and say, "Father, I have sinned," mm-hmm. and they can't be free of sin except this man, this man does it. 
proclaim them free. Uh -huh. After they do something. After they, after they do something. The Hail Marys and then they have to, you know, they have the whole bunch of Hail Marys. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the Pentecostal church laugh at them, but we're doing the we're exact doing, same thing. You know, we can't make a move without them. We can't make a move without our pastors and elders. And now, these pastors, elders, and evangelists, they are needed mm -hmm. for sure. Of course. If they're for perfection and edifying and things like that. We know that. To teach you how to be strong. Teach, but to teach you how. Right. So we use them as exclusive ladders right. uh, for us, and we have no connection to Christ ourselves. Mm -hmm. So whose fault is that? Is that the leader's fault, mm -hmm. or is that our fault that we are, are tricked this way, manipulated? I believe it's both fault, but I mainly uh, blame the leader okay. because it's the leader's job to inform the people. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's his job to teach the people the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about taking the oversight thereof. Uh, he says, feed the flock of God, wherewith the Holy Ghost have made you overseer. Yeah. Don't do it by constraint. You know, it may be two different scriptures, but don't do it by constraint. I believe it's in the book of Ezekiel. He talked about if, if, if the enemy came and you do not cry out and the sheep get wounded, he said, the blood is going to be on your hand. Mm -hmm. So I believe that as a leader or as a minister or those in ministry, we've got to tell the people the truth of the Bible, period, mm -hmm. and put the blame back on them. Never put yourself in the way with where the membership have to depend on you. Yes. When they call me, me personally, mm -hmm. I direct them toward Christ because yes. I don't have your answer. He got your answer. Right. And what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm pushing them back onto him where they can develop a relationship with Christ and they can stand on their own feet. Yes. The song said on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Not on Rodney. Right. <laughs> right. And so I, I blame leadership first if the information is not given out. Now, we do know that there's more than one reason why a student either failed in class. Number one, it's either because the teacher is not effective, mm -hmm. or number two, because the child or the student is not properly listening. Mm -hmm. But the teacher needs to make sure that they're doing their job. That's true. That's true. June Harden says, I call the pastor, but I be saying, oh, God, as I'm dialing. <laughs> <laughs> June, June Harden. Uh, Joe Hill says, I may be the leader's, I may be the leader's job to teach. It may, sorry. Mm -hmm. But individuals will not get it passed because of bad or inadequate teaching. That's why the message that I spoke, and the Lord gave me to speak this at Pastor Marsal's church, I, I talked about uh, strongholds. Mm -hmm. Strongholds are, 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 are fortresses. It is walled cities. It is human reasoning. That's what a stronghold is. Mm -hmm. And and Paul says we wrestle not against, I mean, and, and, uh, he says the weapons of our warfare are not kernel. Yes. The hardest thing to do is to speak truth to an individual who has a stronghold mm -hmm. of a way of thinking or how they was taught when they were kids or uh, it doesn't sound right, so I'm going to use human reasoning. And that's a it's a tactic. It's a warfare that every pastor, every minister has to go through. You got the song said, break up that fellow ground. Sure. And that's why sometimes I understand it takes ministers just a little bit longer. See, we think that we're going to get it done in this 20-minute sermon. Sometimes it just ain't going to work. Right. Sometimes it takes 20 minutes to break up the fallow ground. Because you got to dig deep. you got to get down to the roots of human reasoning and vain philosophy before you can start planting seeds. Yes. you got to tear that ground up. Some of it is dry. The roots is dead and all that. you got to pull all that up, get all of the, 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 the garbage, the trash and all that out. And then you can properly plant the seed. So sometimes, and I do understand what Joe Hill is saying, but that's why I say you have to make sure that the leader, the teacher, the preacher, the pastor, whoever it is, is doing their job as under the anointing of God. Now, you can't force anyone to learn. Mm -hmm. But when they come to court and stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you got to make sure that they don't say, Walter didn't teach me. See, here it is. You just brought up something, man. Okay, you got a light. Let the, light, let the light shine on you. That was a good point. Get the that light that was a great point. Get the light shine on you. You know what? Uh, it's funny how we never have these same problems in the world when it comes to police officers mm -hmm. and judges. Mm -hmm. Because there is a spirit of don't judge me on the earth mm -hmm. among Christians and those who say they are Christians, but they say don't judge me because they're very lukewarm and they just they want to be able to just have fun. 
Mm -hmm. and do whatever they want to do and know that Christ is going to forgive them. Right, right. So they'll say, you don't have a right to judge me. Right. Although there's too much, too much scripture that says that I do have a right to judge you. Right. If you're in the body of Christ, I have a right. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the police pull you over and you never bombard him like mm -hmm. you would your pastor or elder mm -hmm. or, or one of the saints. You never do that. Right. You say, officer, what did I do? And he'll tell you, and in many cases, you says, yeah, yeah. Then you start finding excuses. You will, mm -hmm. but this, this is why I did it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then he gonna write your ticket, and you are gonna take the ticket. You gonna take the ticket. You gonna, gonna take go the ticket, court. and then you are gonna go to court. You're gonna take your head off and stand before the judge. The judge gonna tell you, don't do this, and you won't do it. Right. No phones. You leave your phone. Mm -hmm. You. He said, wear a suit. You wear a suit. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing how we are so obedient to. Uh, what the Bible calls an unrighteous judge. judge. Okay, which, which uh, uh, the uh, the what 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 did Romans call messengers? The messengers, the messengers of God. Of God. Uh -huh. That's what those police are. That's what they are. They're messengers of God. Okay, mm -hmm. make sure and, we do what's right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to us in church, though, yeah, we always have something to say. We've got something to say, and why is it always the fault of the leader mm -hmm. for me being manipulated? Mm -hmm. When I got a Bible too, right? It's, it's always his fault. So we're gonna stand before God and says it was Pastor Bobo's fault. Right? Why I'm not making it in this heaven? Okay, <laughs> you know, and and I, it's the I think it's the Adam and Eve theology mm -hmm. because you notice when God asked the question. What did Adam say? He said it was the woman. And the woman that you gave me. You gave me. Uh, and then he Eve the said, woman that yeah. said that serpent. Beguiled me, okay? Right, right. That serpent. And they both told the truth. They both did tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Who did the snake blame? <laughs> Mo Larry Curl. He didn't have nobody. <laughs> the snake couldn't blame nobody, okay? Right. So we're passing blames, right. passing blames, mm -hmm. and God entertained it because He entertained it, Adam, and He entertained it, Eve. But He wasn't going to talk. But He to wasn't. The serpent. <laughs> he wasn't going to talk to the no. serpent. Mm -hmm. So I think the serpent is working through us. That's why He said, like, "Really?" <laughs> because ignorance is no excuse to no the law. Excuse. So the law is here. We have it's it right there. But we refuse to read the scriptures. Uh, we got Bibles. We, you know what, Doc. We got every type of information available at our fingertip, mm -hmm. and we still won't read it. Still won't read it. And that's why we don't have a lot of miracles here. Over in Africa, they got miracles. They got all kind of stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. But here, everybody listening for a rep, and uh, that's it. When we leave, there's 168 hours in a week, but we possibly spend maybe three hours or two hours dealing with God. Out of 168. No wonder we can't get a breath through. Yeah, woo -wee. 168 hours. And we spend, some of us only go to church one Sunday, right? And two hours is too long. Yes. In service. Yes. But Monday through Saturday, you ain't going to be at church. You're going to be watching Scandal, mm -hmm. uh, Empire, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And our minds, I mean, we, we feed our souls with garbage True. every day. Facebook, you go on there, you see the latest fights and all that. Everything. World star. Exactly. We, we feed our, our, our souls with everything but holiness, everything but righteousness. And come Sunday, it's hard for the praise team to get us up and pumping because we spent all of that time out of God. Yeah. And that's why we're angry because we really don't know who God is. We're angry. We're angry. We don't even want to see the glory of God. I want to be like Moses. God, show me your glory. Yeah. I want to be like John. I want to see heaven open, and I want to see them worshiping. I want to see these 24 elders with them guitars. <laughs> Why can't they have pianos? Man? Nope, because they call them uh, vials. No, <laughs> what, what do they call them? What do they the have? Bowls, the, the, the vials yeah. full of odors. And, no, they had harps. <laughs> yeah. And the closest thing to a harp is a guitar. <laughs> and a piano. And <laughs> an acoustic piano is a harp. <laughs> right. So they, sorry, they didn't have no organs in him. <laughs> no B3s. No B3s. And for God, God's sake, they didn't have no drum machine. <laughs> no NPCs. No, sir. Uh, so, but them, them 24 elders, them four, them boys was, they was, but notice in this lesson, the angels didn't join in until the second stanza. That's true. Because they couldn't sing the redeemed part in the first part. My Lord. Because they were not redeemed. Ooh. But they was waiting for the chorus. They were waiting on the chorus. Because the first one started with these, with these, these four creatures. Yes. These four creatures broke out into praise, and then these 24 elders went and got their harps. 
And then they have the vials. That's an imagery of the high priest mm -hmm. because the high priest had the vials and it had the censers in it mm -hmm. or incense in it. Mm -hmm. And he says that these are the prayers of the saints. It typified the prayers. Mm -hmm. Now, I forgot what chapter and verse it is, but it talked about that we offer up our praises, the sacrifice of praises, and it's Jesus Christ who presents them to God. Mm -hmm. So that's why he can call us priests on earth, because anytime we offer up a priest is who offers up something and we offer up prayer, we offer up praise, we offer up worship, we offer up the sacrifice, sacrifice of our lips. Every time we offer up something, we are a priest right. and it gets to the Holy of Holies, which is actually heaven, but it gets there through Jesus Christ who the Bible talks about that his flesh is the actual veil mm. that was the Old Testament veil. Ooh. And the Holy of Holies is heaven and Christ is our high priest. So we send them up and then he takes them and he offers them to God. And then we see these 24 elders and these four beasts with our prayers inside of that golden bowl, My Lord. offering them up to God. And that's why the song says, saints, don't stop praying for the Lord is not. He'll hear your cry. Are you here? Do I have a witness? Somebody out there. Mm. And so that's why it's important because I read where the church was praying without ceasing. And the Bible said that the angel came and slapped Peter, told him, get up, boy, they're praying for you. He mm. gets up, he goes there, they're still praying for him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for some reason, we stop praying. We, there is a, there is a uh, intercessory less uh, church. <laughs> I just made up a word intercessory less church that's going on because if we're going to pray, we're going to pray for ourselves and our own needs and the needs of maybe our children. But that's as far as it go. Our prayers don't reach outside the house. Mm -hmm. um, and so Peter, so, uh, so who was it? Who was that in the, in the jail? Peter. Uh, Peter was in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, and they prayed. Yes. Sir. Mm. Now the, the, the king, who was that? He he killed. He, he it killed pleased. He ple it pleased him first of all. It pleased uh -huh. the people. That is mm -hmm. what he did when he killed uh, James. Yeah, he, he yeah. saw that it pleased. It him. was excited. It was he was excited about that. Mm -hmm. He was he was high and lifted up. <laughs> okay, so he getting ready to, to take out old Pete. Mm -hmm. The saints before Easter. By Easter right right by like Easter. Uh huh. So the saints are in the house praying. Mm -hmm. Peter's asleep. Mm -hmm. The funny thing about that, if I know I'm going to die the next day, I, it's going to be hard for me to go to sleep. Not if you're a child of God. That's my whole point. Yeah. He realized, for Christ I die, for Christ, Christ I, live, I live, and for Christ I die. Because Jesus had already told him, you're going to be he strung out for yes, me. Yes, sir. He told him. They're going to stretch you <laughs> out. They're going to stretch you out for me. hang you high. They're yeah. going to do it. So Peter said, well, so, I'm going the way that the Lord I'm said going, I'm going to go. So why not go to sleep? Mm -hmm. He went to sleep, and the angel came and said, get up, boy. Mm -hmm. And he was so drowsy that uh, he couldn't even open the door. No. I mean, because he just, well, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so he got him out of there, and he, and he got to the door. He he rang the bell. Mm -hmm. And wrote her. <laughs> he, he, he wrote the door. He he rang the doorbell, mm -hmm. and the, the the woman, Rhoda, Rhoda mm -hmm. came to the door. Uh-huh. And I don't even think she opened the door. Well, who is it? I mean, Peter. Who is it? Pete. Okay, it left them out there because they because they, I, I think there it is. That's my other point. Mm -hmm. The saints were praying yeah. in disbelief. I, I wrestle with that. Mm. I, I wrestle with that because everybody in the church ain't praying. Ah, okay. See what I'm saying? Oh, okay. oh, oh, oh. So it's just like the Bible talked about when Israel left out of Egypt land. Yes. With mixed company. Yeah, mixed company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was the mixed company that caused them to make that golden calf. Sure was. And said, these be your God. Yeah. Or this be your God. Mm. So, I mean, it's just like that evil spirit that came from the presence of God. Yes. That don't mean God sent it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, he could probably come from the west side. But yeah. all, all <laughs> I'm all saying you? is, is I believe. Now, this is just my belief. This is right in one and one. Sure. That... When the saints were praying, the true saints were, were praying and believing. Mm -hmm. But Rhoda, <laughs> she, she was praying and wasn't praying. That was Mary Tyler Moore. Yeah, 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 that's what I said. Because she didn't believe it. Yes. I just believe that the true believers believed it. Yes. 
Otherwise, they never really would have been praying. They must have known something that if we petition God, he's going to bring it to pass. Yeah. That, that is just my belief. Yes. And that was some of them. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if, this, if they were up in the upper room and a few of them were in disbelief? Oh, yeah, really? That the spirit would not have come at that moment. Mm -hmm. Because it says they all yeah. were on one accord in one place. Mm -hmm. I have, all right, let's go with it. Woo I, 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 it was going to come. Uh huh. Because it had to come. True. Because it was 50 days. Day of Pentecost. Uh-huh. So the Holy Spirit had to come. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody there may not have been baptized, mm -hmm. but he had to come that particular day. And I think, and I'm not going against basically what you said, I think that's one of the reasons why the church has fallen in receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. When somebody was tearing, and they said, well, you can't get it, why not? Because we're not all, we're not all with one accord. Yeah, I, and I've heard that. Well, I've heard, we've heard it all our lives. Right. So they said, in order for the Holy Ghost to come, we all have to be with one accord. But the 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 the, the importance of the scripture was that it was fifty days after the mm -hmm. first fruit. Mm -hmm. So that would be the day of Pentecost, which would be the day that the Lord would have to come. I will say this though, as I challenge you. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a challenge. <laughs> I will say this though. Say it. Say those it, uh, those people. Which ones? The one in Acts two. Okay. The show was different than we are today, boy. Oh, much different. They were hungry. Yes, sir. And I'm hungry. I'm starving. They hungry. Hungry They're right starving. Now. Okay. And there's only a few of us that are starving for him right yeah. now. Yeah. They were so hungry for him because, again, you see the climate of persecution that was happening at that time. Mm -hmm. Notice how the Apostle Paul talked about, you know, it's best that y'all don't even get married. Right, exactly. In this present climate, he says, mm -hmm. don't do it because mm -hmm. y'all about to, y'all about, you about to lose your life and then you, your wife and yeah. then your children. And your kids. Uh, okay, so uh, I believe that the, the Spirit did come, had to come on Pentecost Day, of course. Mm -hmm. I believe the one accord, they all were there mm -hmm. on one accord. They all were, had like minds, mm -hmm. okay? What we're doing now, though, is we're trying, we, the way we're tarrying, we're tarrying as if the, the Holy Ghost went back up to heaven <laughs> and went away. <laughs> so now we've got to tarry and wait for it again. <laughs> and it's here, it's, 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 on, it's right next to you. It's right, good. Right, it's right. a, hey, bruh. Uh, right. Jordy said the word is nigh thee. It's nigh thee. I mean, I'm really nigh. <laughs> Bill nigh, the science guy. And here I am. Okay, you want me? I'm right here. Right. But we, geez, 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 geez. Okay, we're slobbing. Mm -hmm. All right, all kinds of stuff. We, all right, you know, come back tomorrow and get it. Yeah, you was almost close. You was that, you were close. Mm -hmm. So we've turned it into him leaving, and then we turned him into an it. Right. Because it becomes like a disease. Because when we get up in church, we talk about, it. I got it. and But we do nothing with it. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't do anything with him. Mm -mm. Because because I think the old church, they meant well. But I think when, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the way they testify and live their life is almost like, okay, I got it now. Mm -hmm. So we're done. Mm -hmm. right. we're, we're pretty much done. Right. And now right. it, is a, it is a country club. Mm -hmm. It's the country club of Holy Ghost people. Right, right. And they make you feel like you ain't you, got you it, ain't you, got got it. you ain't worth it, you ain't even going to heaven, you ain't got it. Mm -hmm. But yet you saved. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's that's another show. Okay, so set us up, Elton. Set mm -hmm. us up. Jesus opens up the seal. He opens up the seal. What happens after he's opened? Oh, that's the, a good question. That ain't part of this lesson, Doc. Okay. No, right. he, in this lesson he never he's, opened up the seal. He never opens it. In this lesson, he's worthy to open it. In this lesson, he receives the scroll. Yes. In his hand. Mm -hmm. he He's worthy to loose it. He's worthy to open it. He's worthy to look thereon. But uh, we don't even go after this lesson. We're not in the book of Revelation anymore. Sure. But we finally found somebody who was worthy. And that was the key thing. Then all of the elders, the 24 elders, the four beasts, they bow down and they worship him. Then John says, all of a sudden, a heavenly host shows up out of nowhere, thousands of thousands of angels singing holy unto the Lord God. Mm. Oh, man. Hey, y'all, uh, D. Curtis Randall's about to come on right now. Y'all go ahead and tell Grandmama she got to go hide herself in the basement. Uh, lock her in there because um, it is dangerous to be upstairs with this music that's getting ready to play for the young folks. Mm -hmm. D. Curtis Randall's show right now. So what the John show?
All right. Um, tally this up, Ella Jones, if you can. You got time? Mm -hmm. Tally, tally, tally this up here. Verse uh, chapter chapter five from six to the fourteenth verse. What's the whole purpose of of this chapter leading into chapter six? Leading into chapter six, John he sees. Because in chapter 5, this whole lesson uh, lets us know, I believe the topic is glory, it's honor, and it's uh, something else, blessings, forever. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a title of honor, it's a title of worship that has been ascribed to Jesus. Uh, John talks about the sevenfoldness of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which is what we saw. He talks about the four beasts that now, last week, they have something different. Last week, John's focus was the one that was on the throne. This week, John's focus is the one who was standing in the midst of the throne, which is Jesus. Right. And I always say this, you'll know a good religion and a good denomination based on where they place Christ. Christ should always be in the center of attraction on everything. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, the two crosses, one on the, I mean, the three crosses, one on the right, one on the left, but Jesus is in the middle. He's always in the center. Uh, John sees this lamb that was slain, uh, had already been slain. He is now standing. He takes, walks over to he who was on the throne. He receives the seal. He receives this book. And then the heavenly host begin to worship God. And then they begin to talk about uh, what verse is that? Because something he said was very important. When you look at verse 9, it says, And they sung a new song, a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us. Now, uh, King James says redeemed us. Other translation says redeemed them. Mm. But we're going to stick with King James because that's the one we're reading out of. It says, he, Yo, you redeemed us. And this is how we know that the angels is not talking yet. And we, this is how we know that this is the 24 elders who represents the church mm -hmm. because only us were redeemed. True. Angels are not redeemed. And most likely these creatures that we see are not redeemed. Right. Only thing that's redeemed would be the church, would be us on earth. He said that you were slain. You redeemed us. The word redeemed means to buy back. He bought us back. Where was we? We were sold into the slavery of sin by Adam himself. Mm -hmm. Christ came down here as the sacrifice of God, gave us life, defeated sin, because last week Jesus says to John, I got the keys of heaven. I got the keys of death and hell is what he says. And he says all power and authority is in his hand. But now one thing that got me, he talked about that this lamb had seven eyes. Mm -hmm. And when we think of eyes, we think of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We think of knowledge. We think of vision. But we also think of surveillance. Ah. He's surveying something. And when you read the book of Second Chronicles, he says the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro. Mm -hmm. He's looking for someone to show himself strong on the behalf of whose heart is perfect towards him. So God is not just seeing. And I think this is why we're angry so much because we want God to see what takes place in our life. But we want to get the one who offended us. Yeah. His eyes is there. This lamb has perfect vision. He has perfect sight. He has perfect knowledge. He has perfect wisdom. And he has perfect surveillance. He sees everything that takes place. And so the Bible says that he sees and he sees to it. Jehovah Jireh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that word is. He sees and he sees to it. Then he says he redeemed every, uh, this is interesting. He talks about every blood, every kindred, every tongue, and every people. Those are four categories. Because one deals with a race, one deals with a culture, and one deals with a language. So he's saying that God redeemed every language, every language that you can speak. He redeemed every culture, and he redeemed every kindred uh, on the earth. Then he says he made us uh, kings and priests. Yeah. Now, that's two different people. Kings and priests, yes. Yeah, because we operate in the kingdom of God. We are kingdom kids, and we operate as kings. And then there's something that we are not subject to on earth because we are kings and then we offer up things to God by sacrifice because we are priests. And we are that right now. Mm -hmm. He has called us into the kingdom. Then verse 11 says, And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts 
and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Look at what they said in verse 12. Uh, worthy is a lamb that was slain to receive. Now he gave them a sevenfold blessings of power. Mm -hmm. He says power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. When you look at the word power in verse 12, it's different from the word power in verse 13. Uh -huh. Yes, because there's three words for power. Kratos, Azusia, and Dunamis. One is might, strength. Mm -hmm. One is permission or ability. And the other one is dominion. Mm -hmm. I think verse 13, power is dominion. Mm -hmm. But when you look at verse 12, he says he's worthy to receive power. That's the ability. But then when you look at riches, riches is another signal for power. Yes. When an individual has riches, he's got power. He does. When he has wisdom, it's because he's got to have enough wisdom on how to exercise his power. Yep. So strength, strength is another word for power on, in verse 13. I thought I would bring that out. That almost each one of these words in verse 12 has something to do with or related to the word power. Yeah. And no wonder he has the sevenfold blessings of power in verse 12. And then when you get to verse 13, it says, Every creature which is in heaven, earth, under the earth, in the sea, and on the sea, they are all are blessed, uh, uh, praising him. Saying, blessing, honor, glory, and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. So that's to both of them. He says, forever and ever. Then what makes the whole thing concluded is when the beast said, amen. Ah. The word amen means so be it is the truth. And amen is another name for Jesus Christ himself. His name is amen, amen. as well. As well. And the people said, amen. <laughs> And the people said, Amon and Amon. Hit the share button if you can. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe and hit that bell button over there, right over there somewhere. And get these lessons on time. Go to Elder Rodney Jones Sunday School lesson also on YouTube and join in on the discussion where it is uninterrupted. Uh, no commercial, and it's just him sitting at the desk and giving stuff that he could he have time to give you. All right, <laughs> without this big nose guy right here <laughs> poking his poking his nose. And Crystal Jones' blessings. This whole Sunday school series for the month has blessed me. Amen. Maurice Gregory, great teaching, my brothers. Blessings to you and Mark Terry from all the way there from. Florida down there. Oh. Uh, Natasha Miles from Evanston. They're coming from all over the city and country. Far and near. Far and near. Every tongue, every every tongue and every nation. Zolly <laughs> Webb. All right. <laughs> Blessings to you as well, Pastor Webb. All right. And the rest of you. Okay. That's the lesson for today. Study next week's lesson. Have it ready for me. Your, your um, uh, homework is. Um, uh, let's see. You we're in we're in May. We're we're in May, May six. Give cheerfully and generously. Mm. This is about giving. This is Second Corinthians nine, chapter nine, six to eight. I'm going to get in trouble for this lesson right here. It's it's talking about giving, y'all. He with so us partially sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he mm. with sowing bountifully shall reap also bountifully. All right, uh, and um, this giving. Hey, what is it? Oh boy. Yeah, this is I mean I may have to go absent on this one so that I won't get in trouble. <laughs> mm. So be ready for that one. Next week, Thursday. See y'all maybe tonight. Maybe we can talk about Bill Cosby tonight mm. on the So Up the Jones show, uh at about, I don't know, nine thirty, ten, ten thirty. We'll figure it out. Uh he guilty and we'll talk about why. Peace in the Valley. This is the Walter Jones Show.